Hi. So the other day I did a demonstration video of a process of taking Metashape uh, models and bringing them into PostShot using masks created in, in Metashape. Um, it was quite a long-winded process and it went into quite a lot of detail about the benefits of using higher resolution point clouds and um, using higher higher camera solve uh, settings. But at the very end of that video, I just gave a quick view over the quickest ways, uh, the quickest way to export masked images from Metashape, and it was quite a cursory thing. So I thought I'd just, in order to keep the original, well, to give a second option, really, basically, and keep this video quite succinct, I was just going to do a very quick demonstration, just outlining the the quickest method, which isn't necessarily the highest or best accuracy, but it's a much quicker method. Um, so it's using the same uh, data set, so the original images that we were using in the last video. And we're just going to quickly run through, use highest settings, and I default settings are fine. In this particular set, it would be worth upping the tie points and key points a little bit because I was a bit sparse on some of them, but just for demonstration, we're not going to bother with that too much. Again, this is this is really just a very, very quick run through. OK, so that's quite a quick solve. And if we look at the information of that solve, it's about 32 pixels maximum error, which is not ideal. It's OK, it will work and we'll get a result. We can go in and quickly delete some of the... Um, the the less quality points from that original um, original camera solve, which is worth doing. It's quite quick to do. Just use the gradual selection tool, and you just want to work your way up through. The more you slide it up, the more point the, the better. You sorry, the worse quality points get. The more worse quality points get selected until you're left with a very fine range. But very quickly just pull out some of the, the worst ones. Press delete to get rid of those. Again, I'm not going into any kind of accuracy with this. This is just very quickly, just to demonstrate that this is a useful tool. Projection error. Delete those. Right. And then you'll need to re-optimize the cameras. We're not going to use these higher settings. Again, if, if you look at the other video, it'll explain more detail about using those, those higher level camera um, solve it settings but Colmat format which is what we're going to be using can't cope with those so just to keep things quick we're just going to use the standard uh, camera optimization settings and hopefully yeah we're down to a seven pix maximum reprojection error so that's great that's that'll be perfectly fine um, this isn't aligned uh, to any standard views and I apologise for that, but I'm not going to bother trying to realign it because it takes too long. All we're going to do is generate a mask for this, which is the point of this demonstration, really. Um, so we're going to take our bounding box, our work area, or Metashape calls it the region. We're going to quickly resize that. And this defines our crop area. So what we want to mask in the... Um, exported photographs is defined by this this cube as it were after we've built the mesh so quickly resize it a bit more bring the base up and that'll do for now so we're going to build a oh i'm going to quickly rotate it sorry rotate region so it's a bit more in line with the sundial Okay, perfect. Um, what we're going to do now is build the mesh. And a low quality mesh is fine. Again, if you watch the other video, it will go into detail, a bit more detail about why using a higher resolution mesh is good. Um, and I'll show you after it's run what I'm talking about. But just for speed and just to show you what's, how, how I'm using this the quickest way, we'll just use medium. And we don't want to calculate vertex colors because uh, we, it's completely 
are relevant to the process of making the masks. So it's just wasting processing time, really. Okay, and hopefully that's quite quick to run through. Great. So the reason why the quality of the mask is is sorry, the mesh is, is important because you can see here we've got quite low poly count here. And if we had any cameras that were looking along this from this viewpoint and this was exposed out into part of the cropped background as it were, then we would have the masks would be cutting into this this object. So this wouldn't be a good quality mesh to use for this this subject. But however, in this subject, I happen to know that none of the cameras actually have a parallax position that would expose that um, this, the shadow. I don't. I should look it up. Whatever that's called, the shadow pin. Um, they're all. This is all obscured by the rest of the mesh from the viewpoints of all of the other cameras. So. I hope that makes sense. None of these cameras can see beyond that um, uh, the the mesh mask anyway. Not very well explained, but if you wanted, if this was going to be exposed, make a better mesh is basically what I'm saying. We can, anything that you have that is mesh is going to be um, remaining pixels of the original image. Anything that is not mesh will be masked. So just to demonstrate that, we can just punch a little hole in this mesh and the reason we wouldn't necessarily want to do that with this set but that'll just give you a demonstration that that hole there is going to actually create a mask so it's a little bit negative in, in terms of what's mask is, is image and what is what's mesh is, is image and what is um, not mesh is mask okay so all we need to do is create the masks themselves and they come from the mesh model so method is, is from model so from the mesh model and the default settings should work straight out of the box you can play around with those ones if you want but we're just going to use the default settings and that very quickly gives us our masks which are based from the viewpoint of each camera on what it can see on that mesh if that makes any sense so all that's remaining is to export the coal map. So export cameras. Uh, sorry. That's right. And we just want to give it a name. So sundial. And we don't want images exported because we've, we're going to export those from the masks. Um, uh, algorithm that, that'll export the, the combined masked image images and we don't want to export the masks either it seems counterintuitive but this is the quickest way to do it make sure that you don't have transform to pinhole camera selected um, again I go into quite a lot of detail in the other video about why it's better to do that um, but it, it's a longer winded process so in order to do the quickest process leave the transform to pinhole camera unselected and what that's going to do is Metashape is going to export a, uh, a set of instructions for PostShot to use to undistort the images, which when we export those from the, um, the next menu, the next part of this process, you, you'll, that will export the original image with including its, its lens distortion. So we don't want to select that. Uh, binary encoding seems to work better and then everything else default. Oh, and just bear in mind, you see how this name template is using file name underscore file num dot png. We need to um, respect that format when we come to export the masks. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, just quickly, yeah, sorry, just right click on that masks and export masks. And the selector that we want is image with alpha channel. If we select single channel mask image we'll get the black and white masks but we're going to make use of this setting 
which is very handily in, included in MetaShape. So what that does is combine the original images with the masks and exports an alpha masked image. So that's great. And where I was saying, pay attention to the the um, format for the file name. This needs to be the same as the format that you were using with the Colmac Colmap exporter. So you need to change this here because by default, I think that says uh, masks. I think so. You need to change it to file name, which is the same as the Colmap export file name template. All images and into a folder called whatever you want but masked and off it goes that takes a little while but what we're getting now is images from metashape that's applied the mask to the the image and we've got an alpha exterior and including the hole that we cut just as a demonstration so each image from each camera should respect whatever was mesh is is visible and whatever wasn't mesh is is uh, masked and again actually here we go look i was wrong so there is a a bit of the uh image which does um, overlap that mask and we've actually incorrectly cropped off that bit of the um the model which is part part what we want so we've actually lost a bit of information there so there you go that's a good example of why you would want to use a slightly higher mesh to get a better fidelity in in the edge of that um, tip of that sundial point. So I didn't think any of them. Oh, and another one. There we go. So I stand corrected. I've I've actually cropped off some of my own images, the important parts of my own images. So that was a bit poor. Anyway, right. Actually, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Because it should have kept those actually, I think. I'm going to need to go back to that. But anyway, look, I'm just trying to show you the process for now. We have everything exported now, and all we need to do is just open up Post Shot and drag into Post Shot the sparse, which is the car map formats of the points, the sparse point clouds, and the masked images which we've just created. And really that's it. Just the only thing is these two don't select them. Anti-aliasing you can, but just bear in mind that when you if you want to display it somewhere else secondary after post shot, you may not have the ability to display the anti-aliasing. So be a bit cautious with that one if you if you're not just doing it for your own usage. Um, but that's it. We should really straight away get a upside down um, Gaussian splat that's masked and it's really as quick as that and that's really all there is to it actually. Um, now even though we clipped out those photographs there's obviously enough of them have some information here. I am actually going to make a I've just decided on the fly, as it were, that I'm going to make a bit more investigation into why those images actually got clipped, because here I think there was mesh there. So if we go... Um, oh, no, I'm wrong. Sorry. Yeah, actually there wasn't enough of the actual mesh to create the tip of the... Um, the sundial thing. Um, so yeah, there's a good example of where you would want to use a much more finer mesh in order to, uh, and actually point original sparse cloud, to get more detail in here because that basically resulted in a mesh that doesn't have any data in there and that has then gone on to um, create photographs that have been clipped here. So what it does do is demonstrate the whole point that the mesh is the mask so whatever you create in the mesh is is um is what you're going to get out in the mask in the end and uh usually if it's if it's a you know if you haven't got any little bits like that sticking out then actually it shouldn't matter because you're just defining the outside area so if it's a an aerial shot for example just cropping it to a square is not going to cause a problem because the the viewpoint isn't going to see anything other than the tree or two maybe here and there. Um, 
but that that should result in a fairly good result. So, okay, I've made an argument against my own point of using a low resolution mesh. So that's that's an interesting le uh, thing to learn from this. So, okay, I hope that um, is of help. And uh, thanks for watching. Okay, cheers, bye.